working through the machines and alternating current section of the 2019 physics paper, which starts with question 1.9, a multiple choice question, which reads as follows. Which one of the following combinations regarding the energy conversions in electric motors and electric generators is correct? And we know that a motor always converts electrical energy into mechanical energy, which is either option C or D. And a generator always converts mechanical energy into electrical energy, which means that the correct answer there is option D. Question 1.9, option D. Then question 9 in this physics paper is always related to machines and alternating current. And question 9 reads as follows. A simplified diagram of an electric generator is shown below. When the coil is rotated with a constant speed, an EMF is induced in the coil. 9.1.1. Is this an AC or a DC generator? And the only way to answer that question is to look at how the internal and external circuit are connected, the internal circuit being the coils, the external circuit being the wires leading out of this generator. And these, as we can see, are connected by means of a split ring. And we know that whenever we see a split ring, we are dealing with a direct current. So as simple as that, we say that because this generator has a split ring, it must be producing direct current. Question 9.1.2. Briefly explain how an EMF is generated in the coil when the coil is rotated by referring to the principle of electromagnetic induction. And all that we need to say here is that an EMF is induced as a result of a change in magnetic flux in the coil. We know that that is the principle of electromagnetic induction is that a change in magnetic flux induces an EMF. And that's all re that's required for an explanation here. Question 9.1.3 draw a sketch graph of the output voltage versus time for this generator show one complete cycle. Now a sketch graph means that we do not necessarily need a heading. We don't necessarily need to add values in. All that we need is we need a set of axes and axis titles. The Y axis being voltage obviously measured in volts the x-axis being time, always measured in seconds. And now we know that this voltage, the induced voltage, is going to increase as the change in flux increases. It's going to reach a maximum point, at which point it will then decrease. But because we have split rings which cause a direct current output, the current does not change direction. The current once again increases and then decreases in the same direction. This is direct current and as a result we show that the induced EMF and therefore the current do not change direction here. Then question 9.2 which is related to alternating current reads as follows. A 200 ohm resistor is connected to a DC voltage supply as shown in diagram A. The energy dissipated in the resistor in 10 seconds is 500 joules. The same resistor is now connected to an AC source in diagram B and 500 joules of energy is also dissipated in the resistor in 10 seconds. Question 9.2.1. Define the term RMS voltage of an AC source and RMS voltage means the AC voltage which dissipates the same amount of energy as it would for a DC voltage supply. So essentially what we're explaining here is we're explaining that RMS refers to the equivalent direct current. So the RMS voltage of any AC source is going to be the equivalent that you would get from a direct current source and we specify because this question relates to energy we specify that it's the AC voltage that dissipates the same amount of energy as a DC voltage supply would. Question 9.2.2. Calculate the maximum or the peak voltage of this AC source. And now we know that this voltage that has been given here is going to be our RMS voltage. 
And since we have been given an amount of energy and an amount of time that allows us to calculate the amount of work done using the following formula, work done is equal to V squared over R multiplied by the change in time. We know that this is going to give us the RMS voltage because we've been told that these two voltages or these two powers are equivalent, which tells us that the voltage that we get here is going to be an equivalent voltage. So the work done given to us as 500 joules, the voltage is our unknown, the resistance of this resistor given as 200 ohms and the time always measured in seconds given as 10 seconds, which tells us then that the voltage of the source must then be 100 volts. Now once again, we know that this voltage as given refers to an RMS voltage, so we can write here just for an explanation to the marker, we know that this voltage given is the RMS voltage and that is 100 volts. What that then allows us to do because we've been asked for maximum voltage is it allows us to use the formula VRMS is equal to Vmax over root 2. Once again this formula is given in the formula sheet. Substitute the values that we have RMS that we've just calculated as 100 and Vmax is our unknown over root 2 where we now find that the maximum voltage that this AC source is providing us with is 141.42 volts. Again, we are able to do this because they have told us that this AC source that we are dealing with dissipates exactly the same amount of energy as the DC source, which tells us that once we've calculated the voltage of the DC source, we know that the equivalent voltage must be the RMS voltage that we've calculated here is 100 and then a simple calculation to convert that into a maximum.